All right, welcome back to this uh, new session, uh, 3C Logic Fireside Chats. Again, I'll be your host. My name is Guillaume. Uh, and with us today, our special guest is uh, Michael Lombardo, uh, CEO of GlideFast. Michael, what's up, man? Guillaume, how you doing? Good, good. Well, I mean, it's 2020, so I've been all things. So there's that. Right? <laughs> there's that. There's that. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, you know, we're all kind of sharing in the same challenges privately and business wise. And that's actually kind of what we wanted to talk about with you today is um, I know Glyfast is, uh, is killing it uh, with regards to all the different types of companies and organizations that you guys have been out there helping with, obviously, with everything based in service. Now, I was hoping you'd be willing to share with the audience some of the things that you're seeing, um, yeah. some, you know, what's happened in 2020 that was different from 2019. And more importantly, what do you <laughs> a think? A couple things. Yeah. A couple things. <laughs> uh, but if you were, if you were to see CIO, CEO of an organization yeah. uh, and they were to ask you, Hey, what do I need to plan for next year to be successful? I'm just curious. What would you, what would you advise them? Yeah, well, I think uh, with COVID, obviously, things, uh, everything got turned on inside of its head, right? So, you know, digital transformation is no longer an option. I think that's very clear for everybody, right? Swivel chair activities are just no longer possible. It's not that it's a good, it's a bad, you know, process or, you know, costs organizations money. It's just no longer an option. So I think, uh, you know, leveraging uh, platforms and tools to really help, uh, you know, streamline customer service, employee service is going to be crucial, right? Automation around that is, is absolutely crucial to the success of this business. And it's no longer competing. It's really survival of these businesses, right? How can I serve my customers? You know, I, I, we're not in a call center anymore. We're, uh, all my users, all my call center agents are dispersed across the whole U.S. or world, um, you know, uh, tribal knowledge is, is no longer really a thing. We need, we need to implement a knowledge base that has all of the information that my agents need to support our customers. We need right. uh, virtual agents to, to help streamline and, and um, you know, leverage that call deflection. We need, to, we need to keep my customers off the phones as much as possible and on a self-service platform. So I think uh, there's a lot there, but in, and uh, I think a lot of organizations, like I said, got, got turned on its head, but um, you know, this is America and we're, we're going to survive and, and thrive through this. Fair enough. And I mean, that's interesting. You brought up some, uh, some interesting points. So I know I, we recently um, had a chat with uh, Nitin, the head of uh, product strategy for CSM for service now. Yeah. And uh, I think you're kind of hitting on some similar points. He would say, look, y y you need to get rid of, of all of the mundane tasks. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And that's where automation can really excel so that you can really reserve, um, you know, if and when someone needs to have a conversation in one form or another with your more valuable resources, whether it's the call center, the front office, the back office, or maybe the front office that needs to make sure that they can collaborate with the back office that they're not tied down with those mundane tasks, right? So you lead yep. with the portal and virtual agent and AI, et cetera, et cetera. And it's more the diversification of, of resources. What are your thoughts about that? A hundred percent. I mean, uh, we, we talk a lot of, in the service now world about the messy middle, right? right. So uh, what happens when a user, from the time a user requests a laptop to the time we deliver that laptop in the past, it's been, it's been uh, a, a, just that, a messy middle, right? It's emails are flying around. We're ordering, you know, from people are shadow IT, ordering their own equipment. You know, organizations really need to standardize these processes. And that's really the a, a, a huge benefit of service now is the power of the workflow, right? We keep talking customer workflows, employee workflows. And really what that means is just a standardized process. Right. So it's it's a it's a repeatable process. We can predict the amount of time it's going to take to deliver these equipment and these services. Um, and there is no better platform, I think, you know, than than service now to, to help uh, facilitate those workflows and standardize those workflows. Well, obviously, at 3 Logic, we're big fans. But, you know, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Who are the new decision makers? Has that changed? I mean, if you talk about digital transformation, you obviously think primarily technology, although you yeah. hit on something really important, which is digital transformation isn't just about the tools. It's about the procedures and the processes that have to enable that as well. But have the decision makers change? Is the CIO now the, the kingpin or what's that look like? 
You know, I, I, uh, I obviously the CIO is a big part of it, right? They own technology, but it, it's almost like uh, we're leveraging CIO as a broker now, right? Like ServiceNow, and, and again, my world is 100% ServiceNow and, right. and, and leveraging that to help organizations, you know, achieve maximum efficiency. But, you know, really CIO is being leveraged as a broker now where, um, you, you know, technology is really driving revenue for businesses now it's no longer just this cost you know it was in the past has been viewed as a cost to organizations you know the information yep. you know the it department's costing us money and you know but now it's no no this is we're helping support our customers here right we're we're supporting the call center agents that support our customers and yep. so i really think it's yes the cio is is definitely uh is typically the person where uh, starting these conversations with, but then uh, we're getting introduced to the leaders in the HR, leaders of the call center uh, departments. And so it's really a CIO as a broker. And, you know, and, I, and I'll say this along the same lines is, you know, the, the, um, these implementations are, you know, the success of these implementations are very dependent on top-down leadership's buy-in. So if, 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 uh, if we buy a new product, you know, if an organization buys a new product like a service now, and, you know, a lot of uh, employees are resistant to change, right? They're stuck in their ways. They like pen and paper sometimes. They like emails. And, yep. you know, if we're not getting the buy-in from leadership to say, no, no, we're moving to a new platform. We're reinventing our processes. We're reinventing the way we deliver service to our employees and to our customers. If we don't have that top down buy-in, then it, it all trickles down, right? So it's, it's the same kind of mentality. Oh, we don't really have to do that. We don't really have to. So, so it is absolutely crazy crucial to get the the buy-in from our uh, leaders at these organizations um, and make sure that that goes down to their management teams and so on. So what are the biggest, when you're talking about buy-in and if I, if yep. I had to counter and say, okay, here are the main three hurdles that you have to overcome to get that buy-in. Yep. Um, what, what are they or what are there any, is there anything that the customer has to do before they're in a position to even pursue this, this digital transformation, you know, initiative, you know, momentum. I think a, a heavy emphasis on process is really important, right? Like uh, obviously no platform or technology is just going to magically fix, uh, you know, challenges or difficulties organizations have. So, uh, you know, a, an upfront emphasis on process evaluation, walking through what, what it is they do today, what technologies they have to do today, where we can consolidate. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. one thing I love about three C logic is, is it's, it's, really basically in the service now platform it's a part of service now it's not real we're not swivel chairing to another screen to another system we're let you know so it, it, you know those type of things i think are really important um sorry did that answer your question no it did but actually that leads to another though so yeah. you're actually talking about consolidation of platforms i mean look yeah. i don't think the world needs another platform yeah really yeah um it doesn't need another crm so do you think that 2021 I mean, I think I saw some statistics. It's nuts. Some organizations, like they average a couple hundred platforms per employee. As yeah. an employee, you can't manage that. It's nuts. Um, so, you know, I think um, uh, before Bill McDermott, uh, you know, they, the message was that, you know, the service now is one of the five platforms. It's it and maybe SAP and Dynamics, Salesforce, take your pick. Yep. Is that going to be the new, the big theme in 2021, which is, you know, the finishing the consolidation effort and then build and then everything else branches off of that. Is that the absolutely. idea? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and we saw it really with the COVID crisis really shine a light on this. You know, we saw the business, right? The business side. So outside of IT departments, we saw them need to solve tough problems, right? Where maybe they had processes living in emails or applications right. that couldn't support uh, the, the volume and the demand that they, that they needed to. And they, they turned to IT, they turned to their CIO and they said, what can we use? What can we use to, to solve this problem? And we need to do it yeah. next week. We, you know, our right. call centers are slammed. Like we don't have time to evaluate new, pr right. new uh, platforms in, in, you know, what IT basically said was, you service now. This is what we've been, we've been telling you. This is not just a ticketing system. This is a platform that we can handle workflows and processes. 
um, and, and organize it, right? We can get rid of that, again, that messy, I keep going back to that messy middle and just in structure and streamline these processes. So uh, I think that was a big wake up call. And then when, and then when those processes improved so much, within weeks, I mean, we had, a, we had many, many projects that we all, everybody was scrambling to get things done as quickly as possible. A lot of uh, state and local governments for unemployment assistance, financial assistance. And those were, you know, that those their lives are lives are on the line, right? This is not right. just IT problems and computer problems we're solving now. Now we're, we're helping, you know, uh, save people's lives here. So, um, it, so once we were able to come through with service now and actually, resolve these issues and streamline these issues and, and help these organizations serve their customer base. I think it, it's just a whole new world now. Now, now it's service now is crucial, is a crucial platform to our business. It's not a cost anymore. This is crucial to the success of our business to, to allow us to continue to, to operate. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so do you think, um, if you had to look at, you know, going into next year, what are the industries, you know, final question, what do you think, which industries are, are most ripe for that disruption? Is it the ones that were hurt the most? Like, uh, for example, the airline industries, or, yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts there? I mean, you, 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 I, mean, yeah. I know at Glidefast, you guys have done everything from state, local, we're private, everywhere. Yeah. You're everywhere, right? So which That's industry do you think, or industries do you think stand, as, you know, uh, stand, to have the best or most opportunity for, for, for growth or, or impact with digital transformation if they do it right. You know, it's, it's really any organization that serves customers and has employees really, you know, that, that, that have processes. So it's really going to be across multiple industries. I really think, um, you know, technology companies, uh, healthcare, financial, the financial industry, um, you know, I, I'm really curious to see what happens with the airline business because I, I just don't know uh, how how soon business travel, leisure travel is, is going to come back. Yep, um, so, you know, I, I'm or, the, or the hotel industry for that matter, or, the hotel or everything industry, tied to it, right? It's, yep. it's, 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 uh, it's really, you know, it's really difficult to predict. And um, obviously, we're all praying to for, for this economy and, in, 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 you know, uh, pandemic to, to fade away. But, you know, yeah, I, I think really it's just there's the opportunities are just unlimited because I think we've been able to get away with not having to, you know, get up to speed with digital transformation and make some of these changes and use legacy systems. And, and like that opportunity is, is no longer there. Like it's just not an option anymore, like I said. So, um, yeah, I think I think healthcare is going to be really, really big. Um, uh, that's my background, and I've I've always believed uh, for a long time that healthcare could definitely get up to you know is a little bit behind in the times for technology and in, in servicing their customers um, or patients, should I say? But uh, yeah, no, I think across the board, I think uh, you know uh, leaders have woke up. I think they've seen the value, and I think we're just gonna it's gonna scale across the entire business and in. in, in I will, we'll be talking next year. And then a year after, like, remember when service now was just considered an IT platform, you right, know, right. I think it's just going to be a whole new world. I, I hear you. And what I hear you saying, which um, we, we just had um, a lead analyst uh, and kind of coined the term. He said, look, I, I don't think digital transformation we're, we're sprinting to the finish line. You're saying, I think we're sprinting to the starting line. It sounds like that's, that's a little bit of what you're saying is that, you know, we, we've made do and kind of put it off. Um, but, 2020 has made it glaringly obvious that uh, it's not something that we can put off for much longer. So look, I, I, the other way I look at it is that uh, what stands in front of us, if, uh, if you're a CIO or, or anybody that right now has, has had to contend with the issues of 2020, it, it simply means that you're going to have an interesting 2021 um, sure. solving and optimizing and, and really driving more efficiency at every layer of the company, back office, front yes. office, your agents, yep. uh, HR, customer service, and IT. Well, look, Mike, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. My Any pleasure. Final thoughts? Um, no, just uh, looking forward to uh, re finishing this year off. Um, no, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, yeah, no, to anyone out there looking for uh, help around ServiceNow platform, uh, Glidefast is an elite partner, 100% uh, focused on the ServiceNow platform. Uh, and, and we want to we help, right? We're here to help. I, I never thought... Uh, 
you know, 10 years ago when I got into the service now space that I'd be leveraging this platform to, again, help, help people's livelihoods and uh, in, in more than just IT problems. So I'm thrilled to do that and, and uh, more than happy to, to uh, help, help anyone we can. Well, you're the man. I'll talk to you soon, Mike. Good All right, thank you. you. Thank you. See you, bud.